Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss using the Bohr ring model. Today's essential question What is the Bohr ring model, and how can it be useful? Please make sure you remember to answer the essential question as part of your summary. For today's lecture, you should have your periodic table handy. Okay, so the Bohr ring model. Niles Bohr came up with this model of the atom in 1913. We will discuss later how Bohr came up with this model, but for now, just know that this guy named Bohr came up with this particular model. He proposed that the nucleus is at the center of the atom and that the electrons orbit or circle the nucleus in an organized pattern. And we'll spend the next couple of slides talking about this organized pattern. So, in Bohr's model, a certain number of electrons can orbit or circle the nucleus at a certain distance from the nucleus. Energy levels. That particular distance we just wrote down, the electrons orbit from the nucleus, is called an energy level or a shell. And the electrons, which in our little diagram below, are labeled as the blue dots. So the electrons um, closest to the nucleus are in what we call energy level one. So this, um, the white in the middle labeled is the nucleus. The yellow ring here is energy level one. And then um, those are the electrons. And, important, very important, energy level one can hold two electrons. The electrons that are a bit further from the nucleus are in energy level two. So in our model down below, the green here is energy level or shell two. And as you can see, they are further away than the yellow, in this case, energy level one. And energy level two can hold eight electrons. Okay, so the electrons still further from the nucleus are in energy level three. So the pink ring is energy level three. The green is still energy level two. And the yellow, in this case, is energy level one. Um, what you should note here is that as the numbers get bigger, so one, two, three, the electrons, their orbits, their energy level, their shell is farther and farther from the nucleus. Okay, and energy level three can hold up to 18 electrons. Okay, last point about about energy levels and in general Bohr ring model before we move on to more specifics is that Bohr's model of the atom is not really how the atom is set up. However, it's actually a very useful model. Um, and that's actually part of your essential question. So as we're going through the rest of the lecture, think about how is this model useful? What can we do with it? Okay, another term that we're going to be using a lot throughout this, this first semester is valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level. And valence electrons, to chemists, they're our favorite electrons. We love valence electrons. And as we proceed through the semester, I'll tell you why, but for now, know that chemists love those valence electrons. All right, so I want to do a quick example here. So let's draw a Bohr ring model for an atom with an atomic number of 5 and an atomic mass of 11. So if the atomic number is 5, that means how many we have? 5 protons because remember that the protons are the same as the atomic number. We have 
five electrons because the number of electrons need to equal the number of protons. So let's start by putting in, well, let's finish this. Um, our neutrons, to remember to get our neutrons, it's the mass number minus the atomic number. And that gives us the number of neutrons. So our mass is 11 and our atomic number is 5, which means our number of neutrons equals 6. All right, so let's draw this model. Um, I'm going to draw the protons in yellow. They go in the, in the nucleus. So we have five protons, one, two, three, four, five. And I drew them with little plus signs to show that they have a positive charge. Um, I'll draw the neutrons in green. And they have no charge, so I'll just put a little zero in there. One, two, three, four, five six and then we have to draw the electrons so how many electrons can fit in the first energy level well energy level one can hold two electrons so we need to put in a total of five electrons but two are going to go in the first energy level we have three more to put in how many electrons total can fit in a, the second energy level? Energy level two can hold eight electrons. Um, so energy level two can hold eight electrons, but we only needed a total of five. We've already used two. So we just need to add three more. And there you go. There is our Bohr ring model. The next question here, let me clean this up a little bit. The next question here is, how many valence electrons does this atom have? Well, valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level. The outermost energy level is the one farthest from the nucleus that has electrons in it, and that in this case it's the green one, or energy level two. So, and there are one, two, three electrons. So this particular atom has three valence electrons. All right, and then last topic for today is talking about ions really quickly or charged atoms. Um, this is a topic we're gonna to spend a lot of time on in future. So this one's just an introduction. So an ion is an atom with a charge. Remember that Atoms don't normally have a charge, right? They have the same number of protons and electrons, so there's no charge. But an ion is an atom with a charge. How does that happen? Well, if an atom gains or loses an electron, it'll now have a charge because it doesn't have the same number of protons as electrons. So let's try this. Let's draw a boring model for an atom with five protons six neutrons, and two electrons. So I'll draw my five protons. One, two, three, four, five. And my six neutrons. And now my two electrons. Where do we start by filling in electrons? Always the energy level closest to the nucleus. And energy level two can fit two electrons. So I'll put two electrons there. And that's all the electrons I need. So there's nobody in the second energy level. Okay, so there's my boring model for um, an atom with five protons, six neutrons, and two electrons. But now, what is the charge on this ion? So first of all, we should know what this ion is, what, what atom it is. So what atom, look at your periodic table, what atom has five protons? That atom would be boron because boron has an atomic number of five, which means boron has five protons. So this is boron. Boron now has a charge, right? Because he had, he used to, he has five protons. I'm going to draw them out here. One, two, three, 
four, five, um, and only two electrons, which means these charges cancel out, right? No charge there, no charge there. What's left over is a three positive charge. So he is boron three plus. And if we wanted to write the nuclear symbol, um, which you may have to do for your assignment, if you remember at the top you write the mass, atomic mass, and at the bottom it's the atomic number. So we could write this as mass is protons plus neutrons, so 5 plus 6 is 11. So he would be boron 11. And then the bottom number is the atomic number, which is the same as the number of protons, so 5 with a charge of 3 plus. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.